Hey everybody, it's Dee Dee here with Take Three, and I am here with a couple of folks from an amazing movie called Rent-A-Pal. Where did Rent-A-Pal come from in 2020? It's called timing, right place, right time. And we just happened to have this gem of a movie um, ready to go at the beginning of 2020. And, you know, with the pandemic, I just think we got in front of the right people and we got IFC's attention um, on a really good film. And then we just released at the right time. I really, really believe that the timing was just perfect on this, not only in its release, but um, from conception to getting shot, to getting brilliant actresses like our friend, Amy, and I think everything just kind of lined up um, in a really unique way. So we got lucky. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you guys both um, get involved in this movie? Uh, you want to, you start, Amy. Um, so I actually uh, self-submitted um, through actorsaccess.com, which is an actor database where you can submit to projects. And um, so I submitted and they asked me for a couple back-to-back -back, um, auditions. They sent me the script and they were like, we love it. Um, John Skyped with me and he was like, you know, we'd love to have you out. So they, they agreed to fly me out there. And I'm actually from New Jersey. So I, I got really lucky. I was very, very lucky. Um, so I kind of got thrown into this, you know, beautiful, magical film with all these amazing people from Denver, Colorado. And that's, that's how I came into it. <laughs> And uh, I had worked on a, a film uh, a few years before rent a -Pal called Hoax. And uh, John was working on that as well as the DP and a handful of the crew. Um, and so I was going through some personal things that John had just gone through. And so I reached out to him and just wanted to connect. Um, and he said, funny that you're emailing, emailing me. I happen to have this script that I think you'd be perfect for. So he sent it to me. I was about eight or nine pages in and I was like, I have to do this movie. I, this is unlike anything I've ever read before. Um, and basically called him back and said, please, 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 can I be a part of this and uh, produce as well? And luckily we struck up a deal and the rest, as they say, is history. <laughs> so there's there's a little bit of intensity in these in this film with your guys's acting. How did you prepare for these roles? Um, well, first, John told me about the Rent a Friend, um, which is the source material where Rent a Pal comes from. Um, a video that was in the 80s that is essentially what you see in rent a -Pal. Um, So I went to YouTube and I watched those videos while I, I do all my lines on note cards. And so I was preparing the role in, in the way that I prepare roles. Um, I come from theater, so I'm all about rehearsals. I'm all about doing all the prep work before you actually do the work. Um, so I, I, I would kind of submerge myself in that rent-a-friend world uh, and see what that was like. I then, that the house that we shot in was right next door to John's actual house. And um, we were allowed to go in the house and me and Kathy Brady, who plays my mother, would sit in the house and just go through the script. And when things came to our mind, we would talk about it and we, created a bond pretty quickly and very personally. Um, and sitting in the house, which all that stuff that you see in the movie was in the house. The art direction just came in and arranged it the way they wanted it, but it all existed in that house. So the house had like a smell to it. it smelled like my grandparents' house. It was mm -hmm. like so authentic. Um, so we would sit in the house and explore things. And we did some rehearsals with John and um and the rest is just you know it's a very personal character for me there's a lot of things that you see on screen that come from the deep dark places in ourself um and i just wanted to make sure that david was really honest and truthful and an authentic character that the audience could connect with 
Amy. Thank you. How can I follow up after that? It's beautiful. Well, come on. Of course you can. <laughs> um, yeah. So, I mean, I will have to say from the very beginning, just even auditioning with this role, I fell in love with my character and I saw a lot of myself in her already. Um, so I feel like it was really easy for me to sort of get into the, the character as Lisa. Um, she's very kind. She's very compassionate. She's a caretaker. Um, I'm a meditation teacher in real life, so it gives me great joy to help other people and to, you know, help inspire others. And so um, I had a lot of compassion for her right, right off the bat. Um, and then I, you know, I just did some exercises. Like I never made a dating tape before. I worked with an acting coach actually. And she was like, she gave me some uh, ideas of to stuff to like mess around with at home. She's like, why don't you try making a dating tape? Like for real, like as me, Amy. And I was like, that's a great idea. Yes. And I did it. And it was so like weird and awkward. And I felt so like, I don't know, but it was like such a perfect um, space to be in for, for that sort of, for that scene really. And, um, you know, getting into the costuming always really helps. And figuring out her voice, um, the sound of her voice, and, um, you know, learning the lines, of course, um, like, you know, subconsciously, like, I, I like to work out when I do my lines, um, I like to, to run while I'm saying my lines, and then sometimes I'll say, like, the intention, or, you know, like, say them in my own words, so that it's so truthful and authentic to me, and it's, like, sort of, like, in my soul <laughs> um, by the time I get to set, and, um, yeah, I felt like it was like a really easy shift for me um, to do. Um, sorry, I thought I froze for a second. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so there's that. So when you guys were filming, obviously Andy is all on a VHS. Was Will ever on set with you guys or did, was it just the VHS that you were watching and interacting with yeah will was never there he came in for he was scheduled to come in for two days he came in so prepared and knocked all of his stuff out in a day <laughs> then the next day we had some pictures together and then he was gone um so everything that you see is at least you know from our perspective is us interacting with his character always on a TV screen, which I think is really wonderful, especially as it pertains to the story uh, that we're telling. Like, I think it works because that he was never there and that it's just the screen. So we shot for three weeks. We took a break because I had to do a play and that we had to get Will's footage. He came in, shot his stuff. They sent me what was called the Andy tapes so that I could rehearse with those Andy tapes. And then we came back in and shot two more weeks with all of Will's uh, footage on the TV. And they would puppet master the TV, it was connected to a computer and they would queue up the scenes. Um, and Jimmy who produced this film would essentially control Will Whedon <laughs> on the TV. So if I needed a little more time to react to something, he would pause it and then he would play. I mean, it was a, a beautiful kind of orchestration of, of an actor in a very unique way. Oh, yeah. And I, oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, you go ahead. No, I was just saying, I think when me and the only time that I see Andy, Andy on the screen, um, we actually didn't have his footage yet. So it was just me and what Brian. Tweet, huh? Yeah, and so I never got to see his footage or anything until the finished product. And so we were kind of just reacting off of, you know, <laughs> just this, like, like a green screen, I think, right, Brian? It was like a... Um, I think it was, yeah, I think it was a green screen. Those are the only yeah. times that it was actually a green screen. Yeah. That was when you guys were down in the basement together. Exactly. Correct, yeah. yeah, that must have been in those first three weeks and then you only came once during that second set of filming right yeah for the final finale because I actually got yeah. sick so like the first right. time I was there we, we had the big finale scene at the end and I was feeling really terrible and I actually like kind of passed out a little bit and someone Not called me and, and yeah and I had no idea like it was such a it was like a thing you know <laughs> um but they were like we can't have you do this scene um but I think it actually worked out even better right because then you had his 
Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> then he had his actual footage. So we were supposed to do the last scene where Brian's actually supposed to like be like Andy. And but he had not he didn't have the footage of Will doing that. So how could he, you know, prepare? So I think that was like really probably nervous for you, Brian. Oh um, I did not want to shoot that scene then. So I'm yeah. so grateful that the way things worked out. Um, because it just wouldn't have been as good. It wouldn't have been as authentic. So thank yeah. you for getting sick. I'm glad you're better. And I'm sorry you got sick, but thank you so much. No, it's, it's okay. You're, you're so welcome. And it, like everything always works out. And I feel like that's kind of been like the theme of this entire journey for me. And I know a lot of, you know, Brian and a lot of, a lot of people on set said the same thing. There were so many synchronicities. There were so many things that like, so many moving parts that were just seemingly orchestrated by like, you know, the universe and just all fitting together just perfectly um, and magically. So that was one of those things. <laughs> True. You look like you're in an indie movie right now. Like the sun. Really? Yeah, you're like, <laughs> oh, oh the sun's coming through and she's like pink hair and I'm an indie movie star. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe we are. <laughs> we are. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> Um, thank you. <laughs> uh, can, can, are we going to see Andy or some sort of, some form of Andy coming back in a sequel here? Um, you know, first of all, I can't speak for John, so I'll just throw that out there. And then just kind of, uh, you know, where I'm coming from is I think the story really ran the course. And I don't, I don't know if stretching it would, you know, ultimately distill it down. It would might water it down if there were more story with Rentapal itself. Um, so I, I, I doubt we'll see any more. But I had great ideas for John. I was like, okay, for the sequel, David becomes the Rentapal. Okay, now he's in the TV and he's doing the, you know, creepy stuff. Or we can do rent a gal. Oh my God! I was just <laughs> that. My mom said that after we watched the film, she's like, "Wait a minute, you can be in the second one." She's like, "Rent a gal." She's like, "You have to tell your director that," which I didn't. But I'm so glad that Brian that you just said that. It's so freaking funny. Yeah, I had pitched them, and then I realized that it was like fruitless. Like we we can't stretch the story out anymore. Yeah. Um, I I think yeah. it was perfect for the time that it was. I agree. Yeah. So this this really is sort of the surprise movie to me of 2020. Um, it is one of the better films I have seen all year. And <laughs> is there a, any award buzz for you guys on this? Oh, wow. I mean, and you have to understand, like, the world we live in right now is some multi- verse where uh, all dreams come true i mean it is just crazy the amount of buzz that we've been getting the the amount of coverage that we've been getting uh, how people are taking to this movie um you know going back to our first question about timing i think this this time in history where people have been quarantined, um, they're, they're relating to the story. They're relating to David's loneliness. They're relating to dating via, you know, the internet and, and essentially video rendezvous in the modern day. Um, they're relating to isolation, uh, relationships to screens. Um, so it's just like it hit home in such a unique way. And the fact that we've been getting lots of great press um, and yeah, we've been put on a, a contender list for, for the Oscars, which coming out of my mouth sounds absurd. Like I can't even, but it's on there, you know, they're, they're recognizing the filmmaking. So John as a director, uh, the original screenplay, uh, the cinematography, which is gorgeous, Scott Park, is a genius and he needs to work all the time. Um, supporting actor for Will Wheaton and uh, actor for myself. So we're just so Yay. blessed. <laughs> we're just so blessed that people have taken to this film and uh, it, it is, it's a strong film and we're, you know, uh, we're very excited to be a part of it. 
Well, I can certainly tell you that I, I, I am I am rooting for you for mm -hmm. a nomination. Um, Bless your heart. Well, Wouldn't well, that be sir. cool though? This like little movie that could that was made for a hundred grand, and it just like <laughs> explodes, and we get nominations. That would be like the the underdog story, you know? You're like, yes, we want it to do well. <laughs> yeah, and you know it's what? That, <laughs> that's like the that's like the feel good stories that we need right now during this time. It, you know, it, this is the little engine that could, and it's so well deserved. I'm Thank I'm you. really rooting for you guys. Thank you so Thank much. You. We Thank appreciate you. that a lot. <laughs> so while we wait to see what happens, what's next for you guys? Amy. <laughs> what? <laughs> I know I keep getting asked this question in interviews and it's always kind of like I want because like I, I really don't have anything lined up and I know that that could change at an instant so I'm you know I'm just like you know I know like I said before everything happens for a reason right place right time um so I know something will flow my way um uh, I've been sort of writing my own stuff right now um I started writing this sci-fi post-apocalyptic sort of dystopian web series um, and I want to be in it. And um, my sister's a director. And she's really fantastic. And I want her to direct it. And there'll be like underlying themes of mental illness. And um, I, 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 so I started writing that. And I have the first two episodes. So that's kind of like where I'm at right now. But as far as like book, like having anything uh, booked, like not right now, not yet. <laughs> and it, it's hard to have a booking right now. I mean, we're still admit, you know, we're still in a pandemic. And just because some things are opening up, shooting has gone in and out. Um, there's really no consistency right now, which for me, I think it's kind of a blessing because now I can just kind of lean back, watch this thing unfold and make a very articulate, you know, kind of informed decision on what's next for me. Um, yeah. I'm a, I'm a character actor through and through. So I, I think it's really important that I follow this film with something very specific that is very unlike David and very unlike mm -hmm. Rinpoche, Powell, um, so that you know the the industry can kind of see me as I want to be seen, um, and mm -hmm. so I don't get pigeonholed or typecast or any of that kind of stuff. So I'm enjoying taking my time. Like I, I think it's great. Let let let's uh, have all this stuff come in, and I can kind of weigh out my options and and see what's next for me. But I guarantee you. It's going to be something good. I can promise you that. <laughs> well, I am, I, am, I am hoping for all of these nominations. And you know what? If you guys get nominated uh, and you're coming to L.A., we better have lunch. Would love I've that. got to meet you guys in person and because uh, you guys are so great. And you know what? Thank you so much, both of you, Brian and Amy, for talking to Take Three today. Of course. Yeah, we're, I'm so honored. Thank you. And I'm so happy to see you, Brian. Like, we're, no. we're so far away. So it's nice to get together and, and see your it's, face. It's I you just too. love you so much. We only get <laughs> little glimpses as this whole, like, kind of tornado is swirling around. So it's nice yeah. to connect with you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sending love. <laughs> yeah. And, I, you know, I just I want, I just want to follow up and just say everybody that needs to see rent a pal It is the phenomenal film of 2020. During the pandemic, it, it fits and it's just amazing. Thank you, Dee Dee. We you. appreciate Thank it. You, Thank you for your yeah. support. Yeah, we're so honored. I'm, we're so honored and grateful. So thank you. <laughs> Go see the movie, y'all. You won't be disappointed. Yeah. <laughs>